Okay. <laughs> As a great philosopher who can find treasures in every corner of my life, the first, the first treasure I found today is the thing that Stan told me this morning. The happiest time of all Stan told me this morning that the happiest time of Stan's 17-year-old life so far was spent in the arms of a beautiful woman, and that woman is his mother. <laughs> well. I believe that Stan loved his parents as much as we all love our parents, no matter how flawed or how unsatisfactory they are to me. And my parents are an interesting couple. My dad grew up in a suburb county in Wuhan, my mom in a town in Liaoning, and they associated with each other during their college in Beijing and gave birth to there, who came to Wuxi for school. Um, my dad loves reading of various fields, including philosophy, history, law, and science. But my mother is more on the pragmatic side. I remember he, she once told me that he used to prepare for an accountant exam for several weeks just with one a single accountant book, which composes the past experience of all workers. And, well, actually, indeed, they share very few similarities. And their union, to my opinion, is very bizarre one. But apparently they love each other very much, which I believe is more than enough. One year after they, they got married, they had me. I can't evaluate whether it is fortunate or unfortunate to be born in this family, but I think I bear certain unalienable right and certain <laughs> gratitude on both of them. So to summarize my girls, in this nearly 18, 18 years since born, to remind me one day when I become a parent myself, and also to share with you who love me so much as to listen to me attentively, I list 10 things that I hope are entertaining and meaningful enough, and that I hope convey some messages to you. Okay. Oh, right, okay. But the first thing I want to tell you is about shower. People ask me why they need my speeches shower. And that question people must, didn't, must forget taking a shower as well. Well, from my me very memory of childhood, my father and my mother kept reminding me to take a shower every day. Well, I did most of the time, so I sometimes would protest when I'm really, really tired in the evening. Uh, but not until I lived with my father three months ago did I finally realize how mistaken, how mistaken I used to be. That day, I walked with my parents, I walked walk with my father in the street of Shanghai. I asked my father, how did you walk so confidently and comfortably in Shanghai with so many people around walking in famous international brands and you only in your old-fashioned t-shirt? My dad lifted his arm, smelled it, nodded approvingly, said, the first, because I got used to them. And second, I took a shower last night. For dignity, Famous international brands may be good, but taking a shower every day is more necessary to make yourself dignified. Next slide, please. And the second thing I want to tell you about the animals. Uh, I love my dog more than any, any other creature on the earth, beside, uh, uh, more than any other creature on earth, beside human. Um, but I have to say, I have to confess that actually my dog doesn't love me as much as, uh, as, much as I, I love him. Uh, actually, he's closer to my mom. He follows my mom everywhere she goes. Sometimes I even feel that I, I kind of drew a jealousy toward them. Though I'm not quite sure whether I'm jealous about my mom's love to my dog or my dog's love to my mom. But anyway, I appreciate my dog for he provides me an object to teach myself how to communicate without language, how to treat the vulnerable, and how to love somebody that may not love you back. And most of all, I appreciate his being as part of my family. Next slide, please. And the third thing I want to talk about is vodka. Oh, I should put this ahead. I never drank vodka before. Um, but during one specific Spring Festival family reunion, the third, third, the third uncle of my father insisted upon me to drink vodka. Well, I didn't know how he got vodka. Maybe he mistaken Mao Tai as vodka. Uh, he told me, a boy should learn to drink wine by the time he learned to drink water. 
and my father by that time had a very serious quarrel with his uncle. In my eyes, they represent the very two generations before and after the Great Cultural Revolution. And that's my first time ever to witness such a cross-generational dialogue. And I learned how serious the difference in cognition could evolve a serious catastrophe. Next slide, please. Next one is about elder people's history. Uh, my grandpa is a very my grandpa is a very interesting man. So it's so that's my grandma. Well my grandma is an interesting woman in, in his selective memory. My mom, my, da my dad used to me that when my mom, when my grandma is, is still young, before he gave birth to my father, he used to risk his life into the pool to pick up the lily pot roots to feed his to feed her family. By that time, picking the lily pot roots was regarded publicly as a mischief, even a torture. And but, but my grandma still do it, which actually the main reason why I'm still stand, standing here. Otherwise, if the family perished, we can't even be heard of God for today. However, my dad told me that by the time I, I was born, my grandma commented that how graceful this, this kid is a boy. Well, I don't know I'll later expand on this topic, but I want to stress here upon the unrealization of my grandma upon the, the, the true value, how valuable is her gender is. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and the next one is useless memory. Well, actually, I had an old habit of keeping old stuff in my store. Uh, I just hate sometimes to throw old things away. Not sure if that's correct. Um, this this makes me feel like that I'm sometimes betraying my old friend because I want to have ownership over them. Um, well, actually, of course, there are bad things, but sometimes I just think that they are part of my memory. My mom said to me that this is useless. I said, I said to her, how is my memory useless? And she still told me that this is actually not a memory. It's like encountering a stranger by a traffic crossing, had a short dialogue, and then departed for different directions. You met, but you left no impression about each other. Same concept could also apply to friends. If you have affection and emotion to everyone you encounter, and that just means for those you are supposed to love, you don't love them enough. Next slide, please. Uh, next one about silver plates. Uh, I remember uh, about three weeks ago, my family went to Xibei Yongyanzun for dinner. Dad asked me whether I saw anything special in the silver plate in front of me. I said, no, this is just a silver plate. Uh, as, uh, he said, this silver plate is actually the essence that completely changed people's, people's opinion about Northwestern cuisine. People normally regard Northwestern part of China as a huge unlimited grassland, a tundra, upon which shepherd of, uh, shepherd of cows, horses, and sheep Strive like cars in the traffic urban. And, but the owner of Xibei is special in that he makes the mild impression look delicate, at least satisfactory enough for urban people to accept. So this constant mindset of a businessman to and the determination to make yourself stand out pushes a businessman to success. Next slide, please. Next one is angling. Uh, so for definition, angling, angling is actually the professional term for fishing. Fishing is a long time entertainment for my mother, uh, for my father, and a long time enigma for my mother. My father is actually an amateur, at least compared compare with those angling fans who wrote the books about angling. Uh, later I realized that this time of, uh, later I realized that that love fishing just as an excuse to take photography somewhere. Though, she's, though he told me that to have your hook bitten by the fish from time to time is something always to expect. And I can't remember anything else that's about said about fishing since it's really a long time ago since I left, since the last time I fished with my father. But I learned from that. But I learned through my, through my father's love for fishing how to unprofessionally love something, which now I, I could apply to hip hop dancing. Next slide, please. 
Um, next, next is lullaby. Lullaby is actually a folklore song that mothers usually stop, usually deliver to children before they sleep. Well, actually, that's exactly the story when I was young. I was begging my mother to at least do something to push me to sleep. And my mother would often try, try her best to make the rites sound very much like lullabies. But her stories were usually extremely idealistic. And no matter how bumpy the process is, he would also give a happy ending by the end of the story. I later realized that this is actually not the case. For real, for, for the reality, it's just not perfect ending. It's just, and so they are all made up by, by adults to hope the jury. And also I learned two things. First is that the time just before falling asleep is a precious opportunity, precious opportunity to expose oneself to your, to your truly self, because this time you are the most vulnerable part of the day. You took off your facade as a boss, facade as a student, and your arm in front of the, in front of teachers and professors, and you just truly want to discuss what you really care about. The second lesson is that no, no real story has a perfect result. That if there is a perfect result, we should always be mindful. Next slide, please. Next one is lopsidedness. This is common, actually common for both of my parents. That when they disagree with each other, their facial expression would tend to make a skewed shape, which I would describe as lopsidedness. Well, um, actually, the, their minds are also lopsided. It seems so easy to, for them to find reasons to disagree with each other, and it's so hard to reach an agreement. Maybe they disagree with each other just to, the, just to enjoy the feeling, the happiness of stating a new one. Or maybe they are simply distracted by the tiny imperfection of the other side, since, it's, since that is so easy to be found. And this offered me a philosophical, philosophical lesson about how to nowadays we all treat each other, about how we are so easy to doubt instead of to believe. That's all. Um, the final one is actually just an exclamation mark. But connotation can have very fundamental meanings. I once despised that, but now I don't. My friends know that I always use a horrific meaning, horrific titles to call other, such as in Chinese, ni instead of ni uh, Sometimes in front of adults, such appellation would leave the impression of a psychophant kiss ass. So my dad told me to use exclamation mark every time to replace such a meaning and also to show, show respect. So if you later receive an email from me without an exclamation mark, they just mean I don't want to be your kiss test and accolade you. So overall, when I reflected on that topic, when I reflected upon those stories, I kept telling myself, just don't forget my confidence and complaints about my parents when I become one well myself. People say it's usually too early to consider such things, but in my opinion, it's never too early to learn to be learn how to be a good parent. Because to be a good parent not, does not necessarily mean you are prepared for it, it's, but it's to learn how to be a good friend. It's to learn how to tell good stories. It's to learn how to observe people around you. It's to learn how to. It's to learn what responsibility means. And most essentially, is to learn how to remain study even after your college graduation. You don't have to wait until you got married and had a baby to finally realize that I actually stopped learning by the time I, I, I got my graduation certificate. If your parents never showed you how to be a good parent, it's okay. I'm, I feel that as well. Girls in my class always talk to each other. I am your father, you are my son. To see if they are practicing already. Well, if you really worried about your own capacity like I do, just like I just follow as I said, be a good listener, a good observer, a speaker, and a good presenter. And after you master such techniques, apply such things to your future kids and don't turn off mine. I wanna I, I, well, actually, I don't want to end my speech high, so, um, so I just want to leave the final message to you. Is that, in my opinion, education, well, actually, we all emphasize education here at BBA, at all campus, 
in, uh, even in the future, college application. But in my opinion, the most essential part of education is from parents. Because parents always stand as a role model for them. Keep that in mind, it will be useful, at least in the future. Thank you very much.